Design with Dream. I'm here with designers from Paul Mel Dumont. I'm here with Shane and Brandon, and we're going to talk about their latest fall winter 2017 collection. Well, I, I just love the idea of your theme. It's about the Pink Panther Gang and also um, the name of your collection, the Evil Palms. Can you tell me about that? Sure. Actually, uh, the Evil Palms is really nothing more than the English translation of Pommier Dumont. Um, but in a way, this helps to sort of, you know, define what the brand means to people but also to really speak to this sort of ethos that he and I came out with this season, which was speaking to the idea of an international jewel thief syndicate. Um, it could be a really interesting sort of play on what we've done to this point. So I feel like the first two seasons were really us defining what the brand is, and now I think we're telling more of a story within the framework that the brand has already set out. Yeah, the, from the first collection to the second collection now, I think to Shane's point, the first collections were world travel, were, uh, were adhering to the jet set. You can travel any city in the world and be well prepared throughout this wardrobe. I think this is the first time taking that idea but actually putting a story behind it that is modern day. So. Well, I love the softness, number one. You know, every fabric you have in this collection, it's soft and it's touchable. Is that mohair? No, it's uh, a lot of velvet. Uh, we have a lot of really soft, washed down corduroys that end up being something like a two wide rail cord. So it's a really thick corduroy. We have the velvets. We also have a lot of Japanese uh, terry oh, yeah. and really soft, supple fabrics that we've washed down as well to give them an extra suppleness. Generally, we always uh, hit a bit of the, the softness in terms of the color palette. I think through every collection we've had a bit of uh, mauve, which uh, I'm not sure we'll ever technically get away from. But I think also the, the upholstery fabrics are something, on the other hand, the other side of the spectrum compared to the, the beautiful silks and uh, cashmere. You also have the very rough tweeds and you have the upholstery fabrics you might find on your grandmother's couch. So we, you know, we take both sides of it and I think they, they have to work in harmony together and I think generally they work better that way. And this season we're going for a lot of ivory. Ivory has been a big tone for us. Uh, both of us have traveled uh, extensively in South Africa. Ivory, as uh, sad as the global story may be, it's such a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, and we try to use it as much as we can. Um, you know, even, like, you know, to Brandon's point, to the mauves and pinks and blues. Uh, we play around some feminine colors, but at the end of the day, it comes off, I think, with the masculine viewpoint. And you have some very handsome bi-panel trousers, the one with jersey and velvet. That's, that's a really beautiful combination. Yeah, it's based on a tearaway pant. I grew up playing soccer. I did. Brandon grew up playing sports as well. Uh, it's a bit of sort of an homage to our youth, uh, to the athleticism, but at the same time, it's a very luxury sort of piece to be able to wear. I mean, if you're wearing that pant, you're clearly somewhere where you can really do whatever you want. And you have Japanese denim, some beautiful oh. Japanese denim. Yeah, typically, whether it be the terry or, the, or, uh, or, or denim, usually, uh, usually we'll have a little bit of the Japanese cloth in there. Uh, Japanese, Italian, English usually are kind of the world we live in in terms of cloth sourcing. And, and one of the things I've seen everywhere, and, 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 and you were probably the third show that we've seen, guys wearing full-on masks, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, right. jewelry things. Yeah, we, we didn't know anything about that. Uh, yeah, usually seasons will come and go, and people will hit on a certain theme, and in this theme, the, the, the mask face has become uh, a thing, and whether Vivian that's... Westwood really yeah, <laughs> Vivian West was the first I saw, and that was like, okay, well... Maybe we're on to something and then yeah, more and more and more. But I think it's fine. I think generally, uh, whether it be the, the type of world we're living in, whether it be politics or, or violence or, uh, you know, that's what 2016 and 2017 are at the moment. It's very unsure. And whether it's, you know, a lofty vision of jewel thieves or maybe it's even worse than, you know, I think the idea of the covered face and the, whether it be the activist or maybe worse. It's the world we're living in right now, so I can see how that is coming through outlets such as the fashion industry. And I think in addition with the specter of some sort of government control or surveillance, the idea of being anonymous and uh, obscuring the face is you know, sort of an homage to things that are happening right now. 